Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Matthew. If you are new here, I am an entrepreneur turned tech executive, worked at places like Meta and Cameo, and now starting my journey as a YouTuber. And I was thinking to myself, what do I know that would be the most valuable or the most helpful for people? And I decided to try to talk about something that I get asked all of the time. A lot of people ask me, how do I organize my life? How do I stay productive, stay on track? How do I do my businesses that I've started in South Africa and Los Angeles? on the side of my nine to five tech executive job. How do I just kind of keep all these balls in the air and keep everything going? And the truth is I sucked at this for a really long time. I used to drag my feet on every project. I wouldn't get started. I think during university, I would cram all night before every test and every paper just in the library, drinking coffee all night long. Okay, so first, the science of procrastination. What is procrastination actually doing? Because it's doing something for us, otherwise we wouldn't do it. Number one, procrastination is stress relief. The largest study ever done on procrastination discovered that the people who procrastinate the most are PhD students, engineers, and entrepreneurs. These are people who have a lot on their plate, a lot of things they need to juggle, and people who are very analytical and thinkers by nature. So if you find yourself procrastinating, maybe be gentle with yourself. You're in good company. It might be your brain telling you that you need to take a little bit of a break and a little bit of rest when things are flying all around with family needs and work needs and all these things we have to juggle, sitting down, having a little time to yourself and a little break to just kind of scroll or think or process or detach any of those things, that's a very helpful thing. And it could be your body signaling to you, hey, you might need to take a little bit of a break. The second thing that procrastination gives us is drugs. Basically waiting until the last second to get something done shoots our body full of cortisol and adrenaline, which we can use as fuel for productivity. We're basically sort of subconsciously leveraging our body's fight and flight response and say, okay, I'm gonna kind of simulate falling off of a cliff or getting into a fight or something like that by, by sort of simulating this last minute, urgent, important, gotta get done right now or I'm not gonna make it situation, which kicks our body into fight or flight mode. We get shot full of these drugs and we're able to crash through and crunch time it and get stuff done and it works. I was addicted to crunch time. I was addicted to these little mini crises and it worked for me for a large portion of my life. And the last thing that procrastination gives us is that it actually fuels creativity. There have been some very interesting studies recently that have discovered that people who procrastinate produce far more creative work than people who don't procrastinate. And I think for me, procrastinating was often a way that I could access my subconscious. It was a way of getting my subconscious off of the sidelines and into the game. The game that you're playing often is your conscious mind. You're moving the pieces around, you're making things happen, but your subconscious is really good at processing, solving problems, cranking on a problem and producing a solution, giving you intuition about what the right path forward is. And oftentimes those things are invisible to us. And so if we rush forward and procrastinate or get things done ahead of time, it doesn't really allow our subconscious to get into the game and, and work for us. And so what I think I was doing was allowing that very kind of creative, intuitive part of my brain and body to work and be a part of the process. Now, what's interesting is that some of these things are very healthy. Resting is very healthy. Um, intentionally resting, recharging, you know, productivity isn't a straight line. It's a stair step. You need to rest, move, rest, move. And harnessing the power of your subconscious is also important and your creativity and your intuition. These are all things that are healthy and good. The main issue that I was running into in my life is that not being organized and procrastinating was actually causing a lot of stress, not only to me and my body, but also to the people around me and the relationships that I was having. The second problem is that waiting until the last second and not being organized and kind of having milestones to get things done only allowed me to have one shot on goal. I would be sitting in the library, cranking on this paper, pushing it out, and that's only one shot on goal. And you can imagine a basketball player, the very first shot that they ever take in their life is not gonna be as good as their 100th shot. Or it's like saying the first draft of a book would be the best draft of the book, or the first cut of a movie would be the best cut of the movie. That's completely unrealistic, and we need iteration and feedback and a process to refine our work over time and make it better each day. My goal often is to make my work today better than it was yesterday. And a one-shot on goal approach to business or work or life or relationships just doesn't work. Okay, so how did I change this? How did I overcome this? Let me break this process down for you. Imagine you're at your house or in your office and you have a wall with a giant whiteboard. The whiteboard is divided into two sections, the backlog and the sprint. And I love these terms. It's so much better than like to-do list, which sounds awful and overwhelming. You've got backlog and you've got sprint. In the backlog, imagine you put a post-it note for everything that you have to do. Anytime something comes up or you think of something you need or want to do, 
you just chuck it in the backlog, create a post-it note, write it down, chuck it in the backlog. This is a messy space for all of the work that needs to happen. It's disorganized, it's messy, just chuck it in there. So what's great about this is that every day and every week, we're not focusing on the backlog at all. It's just like a junk drawer. It's out of sight and out of mind most of the time. Instead, we're focusing on this area. This is the sprint. This is where the magic happens. A sprint is the amount of work that I have prioritized this week. Sprints are one week long. And when I'm done with this work, I'm done for the week. And that's it, I can take a break, I'm done. I did everything that I needed to do this week and I don't have to do anything else for the rest of the week, I can recharge. So let's use a real example of this basic flow. Let's say it's Sunday afternoon and I've got a hot cup of coffee and I'm sitting at a cafe and I open up my backlog and I see a post-it note that says I need to wash my car. So I'll drag that into next week's sprint. And it looks like I need to set up a dentist appointment, so I'll drag that in as well. Oh, and I just remembered that my vacuum cleaner needs to be repaired. So let me write that down on a post-it note and put it in the backlog. And I think I'll actually prioritize that this week as well. So let me drag that into next week's sprint too. So there we go. These are the things that I'm focusing on next week. And by the end of the week, all of these post-its should be completed. So you might be asking yourself, how do I know how many post-it notes to drag from the backlog into the sprint? How do I know what to prioritize? How do I know if I'm doing too much? So let's zoom in a bit more on these post-it notes. In this method, these post-it notes are technically called stories, and a story has three parts. There's the title or label, basically the thing that you wanna do that you've written out, the sentence here, um, like repair vacuum cleaner. And then there's a priority and then there's a lift. Those are the three parts, the title, which is what you wanna do, the priority and the lift. Priority just means how important is this thing? If I use priority one, it means it's really important. If I use priority two, it's kind of important. And priority three means eh, it's not that important at all. Okay, so let's set the priority for washing my car. Uh, it's pretty dirty, so let's set it to priority one. I need to go to the dentist. It's not super urgent, so let's set that to priority three. And vacuum cleaner, uh, it could get done, it could not get done, but I do need to vacuum, so let's set that to priority two. Now, you can have all priority ones, you can have all priority twos, you can have all priority threes, or a mix of whatever. It just so happens that in this case, we have a one, two, and three. Okay, so we've got the thing that we wanna do, and we've got the priority of those things. So now let's add the third piece of these post-it notes, and that's called the lift. So lift means how much effort will this take? Like imagine lifting a soccer ball and then putting that soccer ball on your shoulder. That's pretty easy, pretty low effort, so that would be a low amount of lift. Now imagine a bowling ball, lifting a bowling ball and putting a bowling ball on your shoulder. That's pretty high effort, so that would be a high amount of lift. And for lift, we use a point system. We use the points one, two, three, five, and eight. Why this system? That's a great question. This system was kind of developed by nerds and nerds love things like the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio and super nerdy stuff like that. So these numbers are the Fibonacci sequence, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21. It's worth noting here that you can't go over eight. So if you have a task that's very high lift, you need to break that down, that story down, that post-it note, that story is the technical term, down into smaller stories. So if you have a gigantic task like buy a house for your mother-in-law or something like that, that could be broken down into smaller and smaller stories like research the housing market in your area, scout potential properties, make a list of what her deal breakers are. Those could be their own individual stories with their own individual point values. Okay, and now we get to the part that I absolutely love about this method. Because we're focusing on lift and how challenging something is, we're not really focusing on deadlines. If something gets done on Monday, it's fine. If it gets done on Friday, it's fine. What we're really trying to do is figure out how much energy we can spend per week and how much is appropriate for us to spend before we need to rest and recharge. So that's where Lyft comes in. I know that I can spend about 12 to 15 points of energy per week before I need to rest and recharge. So it's really about how challenging something is instead of deadlines. Deadlines create the procrastination problem where we're like, ah, eh, I've got two weeks to do this or I've got three months to do this. I'm not gonna work on it right now. But if we're using sprints and Lyft, then we can prioritize this week, I think I can get about 15 points of work done or 20 points, whatever is best for you. And then you can prioritize those things that need to get done and you can spend your energy doing those things. And then once you're done doing those things, then you spend all your energy and you're done for the week. Okay, so we understand backlog and sprints and stories, but let's zoom in a bit more on the sprint. A sprint has four columns, not started, in progress, blocked and completed. Okay, so let's say it's Monday and I get off work a few minutes early. So I open up my sprint and I'm like, okay, what stories am I focusing on during this sprint? And I see, okay, I need to set up a dentist appointment. So I give them a call. We aren't able to actually set up the appointment on the call, but we get the ball rolling. So I'm gonna move this story into in progress. Okay, so now let's say it's the next day, it's Tuesday, and the dentist office calls me back, we get the appointment set up. So now this story is completed and I can move it into the completed column. 
And let's say also Tuesday, I'm feeling kind of productive, so I start cleaning my vacuum cleaner, but I don't finish all the way, so I move that one to in progress as well, because I'm still in the middle of it. And then let's say it's Wednesday, and I'm too busy at work and with family to get anything done on my sprint that day, which is totally fine, so nothing happened that day. And then let's say it's Thursday, and I finish cleaning my vacuum cleaner, so sparkly clean, and I also wash my car, also sparkly clean, and so I move those two stories to completed and boom, that's all the work I had planned to get done this week. It's all the stories I put into this week's sprint. So because I completed everything on Thursday, I wouldn't do anything else on Friday or Saturday. I wouldn't drag in more tasks into the sprint. I would use that time to rest and recharge. So you might be thinking to yourself, that's great, but I thought you were gonna show me some apps. So here we go. We're gonna do a demo of the app that has changed my life. It captures this process and makes this process super easy and seamless. All right, welcome to the demo portion of this video. So this is the linear software. Um, you can see on the left here is how you navigate the software. There's a bunch of different features here um, and I'm just gonna kind of fly through the main ones. So this is where I go every day, every week to manage my backlog, manage my sprint, which are called cycles um, in this software. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you through my process from start to finish. So first let's click on backlog. You can see here that this is a list of things that I need to do. Uh, at some point, if I have an idea um, throughout the week, I'll just open this up and I'll say something like um, need to clean kitchen or something like that. Um, what I do is I assign it to myself and then I assign a priority to it um, as we discussed. And then I also assign a size. So as we mentioned, this is the level of effort or the lift. Um, cleaning the kitchen, not too bad. I'm gonna call it a two. Um, I clean the kitchen regularly, so it's not too bad right now. So there you go, boom. The story um, in this software, it's called an issue, but the story is in your backlog now. Um, and I also um, tend to attach a project to these. So I'll show you, this is sort of a little extra feature. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I like staying organized. Um, so I like to kind of assign, it's like tagging basically. You sort of assign a story to a specific project or an issue to a specific project. Um, you can click on projects here and you can kind of see what's in progress, how it's going. Um, and I, these are the kind of major areas of my life that I've grouped things, finance, home, growth, and fun. Um, and then let's click on cycles and you can kind of get a sense. Let's let's click on the current cycle. This is um, the current sprint, um, again, called cycles here, but what we just talked about is called a sprint. Um, and you can see that these are the current things that I need to do uh, this week. So today's the last day. Um, it's Sunday, I'm recording this on a Sunday. And so uh, I needed this week to find my, this video that you're currently watching, I needed to find the B-roll for it, which is all the little extra clips and things. Um, I did that, so I'm gonna mark that as done. Um, if something was in to do, it would show up like this. Um, so you can see here that I needed to do this. I actually am doing this currently, so it's currently in progress. And then when this gets done, I'll move it to done. So I'm gonna show you how that works in just a second. But that's basically it. So you kind of <clears throat> um, you kind of come in here and everything is in to do. So let's just pretend like this is all in, all in to do. And then you you basically just as you complete things or as you start working on things, you start moving it across the board. So data structures is something I'm learning for coding. So I'm going to put it in progress, and you can see that it's there now. Let's say it's the next day, and I start um, finding this B-roll. So I put that in progress. And then it's the next day and I start working on this. So let's put that in progress. And then as you move through these and, and start completing these, you can start marking them as done. So the B-roll I finished, let's say this is done. And what this does actually is if I click on cycles over here, you can kind of track your progress. So you can see the previous cycles that I've completed. I sort of wiped the slate clean a few months ago because I knew I was gonna record this video. So I wiped the slate clean and kind of started fresh so it wouldn't be too overwhelming in here. Um, but you can see this first week, this first cycle, this first sprint, um, I wanted to complete five, or I wanted to complete 18 points of work and I only completed five. So it was 28% successful, which is totally fine. Is it totally okay? You just move as long, my philosophy is that as long as I'm moving forward in some way, then I'm happy. Um, every week, just making a little bit more progress on things. This week I did really well. I, I, I was ambitious and wanted to complete 23 and actually did complete 23, so 100% success. Um, next week, 33, and you can see on down. And this is the current week. So you can see that I kind of started off the week and got some stuff done and then took a little bit of a lull and then completed a little bit more here. And this dotted line is sort of your trend line of, of where things should, should be and go. 
and you can see I was a little lagging a little bit behind, but then today was very productive and I got a lot done. So you can see that I've started pretty much everything that I needed to start here and I've, I haven't have co quite completed everything, but let's go back over into my current cycle and complete this beefy five pointer um, and mark that as done. And now in my cycle, you can see I'm really close. I just have one last little thing to do here. Um, and I actually did do this. So let's go ahead and mark that as done as well. And now you can see, boom, we completed everything. We're feeling really good um, about this particular sprint or cycle. So that's how this works. Um, the upcoming sprint, you can see I have nine points that are ready to go. And so I'm at 75% capacity. And this is calculated based on your velocity over time. So as it, it kind of figures out how much work you can do per week or how much your life has capacity for. And it sort of lets you know if you're over capacity. So let's start uh, planning next week then. Uh, this week went really well. So let's go into the backlog. Um, I do need to learn this iPhone stabilizer. It looks like it's around a two. Um, so I'm gonna click into this task and I'm gonna add it to the next cycle. So this is the current one and this cycle eight is the next one. So we did that. And then uh, let's go back and let's see how the cycle is shaping up. We're at 91%. All right, back to backlog. Let's try cleaning the kitchen next week and I'll mark that to cycle eight. And then how are we looking? We're a little over capacity, at least what we're normally able to accomplish. So you can tell it's 108%. So I'm gonna leave it there. So let me click into this and you can see next week, I'm planning to vacuum the bedroom, deep clean both bathrooms, schedule an ENT appointment, clean the kitchen, brush clean my hiking boots, which uh, has been needing to happen for about a month now. Um, I, need, I need to hang some new art that I got as a gift. And that's, that's gonna be sort of what my next week looks like. And so all I need to do next week is focus on these stories and move them across the board as I can. And once I'm done with these, if I get done on Tuesday, if I get done on Wednesday, then I have the rest of the week free. So that's how this software works. I love everything about it. It's really easy to use. It's really fun to use. And it's really cool to see all these sort of visualizations of how things are going and how my projects are, are evolving over time. And my plan next year is to is to do a group of these projects again with the tw 2025 label on them. And then I can kind of compare years. I just love data, data is fun. And I love how all of this works. Okay, so that's it, that's Linear. I use that app every single day, every single week. It's radically reshaped my relationship to work and productivity and organization and rest and recharge. And it's revolutionized every corner of my life from career and business to family and relationships. And I hope you get some value out of it too. If you have any questions about it, please drop them in the comments below. I'm Matthew, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week.